Well, I hope you're sitting comfortably, ready to find out what happens with marvellous medicine number four. We're on page 89. Back in the kitchen once again, George with Mr Cranky, watching him anxiously, tip half a pint of engine oil and some antifreeze into the giant saucepan. Boil it up again, cried Mr Cranky. Boil it and stir it. George boiled it and stirred it. You'll never get it right, said Mrs Cranky. Don't forget, you just don't just have to have the same things, but you've got to have exactly the same amounts of those things. And how can you possibly do that? You keep out of this. You keep out of this, cried Mr Cranky. We're doing fine. We've got it this time. You see if we haven't. This was George's marvellous medicine number four. And when it had boiled for a couple of minutes, George once again carried a cupful of it out into the yard. Mr Cranky ran after him. Mrs Cranky followed more slowly. You're going to have some mighty queer chickens around here if you go on like this, she said. Dish it out, George. Dish it out, George, cried Mr Cranky. Give a spoonful to that one over there. He pointed to a brown hen. George knelt down and held out the spoon with the new medicine in it. Chick, chick. Chick, chick. He said, try some of this. Try some of this. The brown hen walked over and looked at the spoon. Then it went, peck. Peck. Ouch. Ouch. It said. Then a funny whistling noise came out of its beak. Watch it cry. Watch it grow, shouted Mr Cranky. Don't be too sure, said Mrs Cranky. Why is it whistling like that? Keep quiet, woman, cried Mr Cranky. Give it a chance. They stood there staring at the brown hen. It's getting smaller, George said. Look at it, Dad. It's shrinking. And indeed it was. In less than a minute, the hen had shrunk so much it was no bigger than a new hatched chick. It looked ridiculous. It looked ridiculous.